Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, delighted to have you here on a very sunny Thursday, slightly different to yesterday's weather, thank God. Um, this is the, the next webinar in a series we've been running each month, uh, which covers a number of different topics in the IT and digital world. Uh, in this case, we're going to be looking at data and specifically the rise of the data analyst. Um, if you've joined one of our previous webinars, then you would have been my colleague, Andrew Walker. Uh, if you have, then great to have you back. Uh, if this is the first you've signed up to, then I hope the next hour is uh, insightful, it's helpful uh, and would make you want to come back. Uh, as James said, my name is Paul Crisp. I'm one of the, the senior account managers within Just IT, and I'll guide you through the, the next hour. Um, I think it's fair to say that the data is the new gold. It's key to how organisations are planning and strategising, especially during these uh, unexpected times in the world. Uh, and today we're going to look at the importance of, of analytics when it comes to successful digital transformation. Uh, also, we'll talk about how to develop those skills and also add value to your organization through apprenticeships. We are a massive advocate of apprenticeships here at Just IT. I'm just going to go through the format of the session. So first, there will be some comments from our, our group commercial officer, uh, Lee Dempster. We'll give some context to what we'll be discussing today. Um, we're also going to run some polls. So we want to interact with you, our, our audience, engage your opinions on, on topics relating to data. Um, we're then going to bring in our fantastic panellists, so we've got a, a panel discussion uh, and that will cover a number of different areas, so from an employer aspect, uh, a learner aspect and also from a, a training aspect. Um, and then we're going to discuss a little bit more around how apprenticeships can support this through either upskilling uh, existing members of staff or, or bringing in fresh new talent. Finally, uh, we're going to have a, a Q&A, so as James rightfully said, if you have any questions you want to ask, please feel free to put them into the chat box with, uh, as this webinar progresses. Uh, and we'll look to answer as many questions as we can at the end. So firstly, I'm gonna hand over to Lee, Lee Dempster, our group commercial officer, to give you a bit of context to who Just IT are uh, and what we do. So over to you, Lee. Thanks, Paul. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, for almost 20 years, Just IT has focused on the development of people in the IT and digital workplace. As we've continued to expand, we've added new solutions and continue to support our focus and now deliver via apprenticeships, training and recruitment services to help grow our customer skills for this digital age. We aim to lead the market in innovating, informing, educating and delivering the best apprenticeship training and recruitment opportunities and services to our customers to enrich their lives. We do this because we absolutely believe that every person matters. Our passion is in inspiring and changing the lives of our learners, career developers, employees, and our clients through the blending of people skills and technologies. We know the market is changing at a rate probably never seen before. Digital transformation, work practices, Agility in using new digital solutions and the way people are living their lives are all evolving because of COVID at a rate we've probably never seen before. Just IT aim to be there to support your competitive advantage in your people and how they use their technology. Thank you very much, Lee. I'm going to go back to James. We're going to have our first poll of the day. So, James, over to you. Thank you very much, Paul. Um, so our first poll today is how effectively um, is your organisation currently utilising data? So what I've got is I've got a poll and you'll see that pop up on your screen very shortly. So um, I'm going to launch that poll right now. So that poll is coming up. Could you um, please use the um, functionality box there to tick either yes, no, or don't know. Uh, we've got a few, probably about 30% have voted now. So I'll give that another five more seconds, guys. Please click in five, four, three, two, one. I'm going to close that and share the results there for you, Paul. So 46% said yes, 17% no, and 30%, 37% is don't know, Paul. Thank you very much, James. Interesting to see that 54% either know or, or don't know. So hopefully that this, uh, this webinar helps you understand a little bit more to potentially utilise that effectively going forward in the organisation. Um, I'm going to hand back over to Lee now. Many of you would have received an article that we published online 
uh, which talked about big data, uh, data analytics, and the rise of the machines. So uh, Lee's going to give some context to this and uh, unpack it a bit more. So over to you, Lee. Thank you, Paul. Uh, nice use of the phrase unpack. Um, so the original uh, white paper that we wrote was big data, data analytics, and the rise of the machines. And then we basically separated out the data analysts from it. So when I did it, the rise of the machines kind of immediately painted this um, apoplectic uh, image in the mind, mainly thanks to the Terminator franchise. So I need to stop watching films as much as I do. But today our world is dominated by machines, our PCs, laptops, mobile devices, TVs, cars, the internet of things. But machines are more prevalent when it comes to data and especially big data. We, and of course machines, are generating so much data that powerful computing machines are required to process and store it. What's quite scary, depending on your point of view, is that the machines are also learning. Through computer algorithms, they automatically upgrade themselves by discovering patterns in existing data without necessarily being explicitly programmed to do so. This whole processing of machine learning, rather than being sinister and future vision, is now a reality and a requirement in dealing with the mountains of data we are producing, essentially means that our systems in business and wider society wouldn't work without data and machines to process the data and of course, humans, data scientists and analytics to make sense of it all. So we've got highlighted some of the kind of crazy stats that are sitting in there. Um, so I learn a lot by doing these things, like what a quintillion is. So it has got 17 zeros on it. And we're generating that every day. But equally, you take things like WhatsApp. That's 65 billion messages per day that's being sent out on the WhatsApp group which I can completely understand because the Just IT Poker group sends out about half of that on a daily basis. The global finance sector has increased its spend on big data infrastructure um, and is now worth $30 billion annually. If you were gonna download all the data from the internet currently, it would take you 181 million years. And if you travel that 181 million in uh, the speed of light, it take you 15 minutes. I told you I learned things while I was researching this. So data is sexy. It was actually tagged as that in 2012 by Harvard Business Review. And at the time, it seemed like a very exaggerated review of what was going on in the market. The value of data and more accurately, the value of the insights it offers has been realized now and companies want data scientists. The field of data science covers many disciplines, data analysis, informatics, AI, machine learning, numerical analysis, word analysis, business analytics, and plotting, just to name a handful. More than anything, what data scientists do is make discoveries from data. They are comfortable in the digital economy and able to bring structure to large quantities of formless data. In a competitive landscape where data never stops flowing, Data professionals help decision makers shift their focus to the ongoing customer signals that come from that data. The data analysts are on the rise as business realize the challenges they face to catch up and keep up with the volumes of data. Forbes reported that 95% of businesses cite the need to manage unstructured data as a problem in their business. And the CIO highlighted that 80 to 90% of the data we generate today is unstructured. The challenge has been accelerated with faster mobile networks leading to increased usage. IBM reports that 90% of all data that has been created has occurred in the last two years. This all supports the argument that skilled data professionals and more computer machine power will now be required as we move into the 2020s. It is predicted that 97.2% of organizations are investing in big data and AI and job listings for data science and analytics will reach around 2.7 million by the end of this year, according to recent research by Forbes. Gaining insights from data is critical. Data science extracts knowledge and insights from data, often information that would not be available from one set of data. The term big data refers to data that is so large or fast or complex 
that it's difficult or impossible to process using traditional methods. The roots of data science are in scientific methods and algorithms that are rigorously used. The output has to be verified as plausible. Key aspects are based on the ability to evaluate extremely large data sets that can be analyzed computationally to reveal patterns, trends, and associations, especially relating to human behavior and interactions. Companies are competing on the data capture race. According to Global Newswire, at the end of 2019, worldwide spending on big data was already worth $180 billion and is projected to grow at 13.2% in the next two years. Reports have it that IT purchases, hardware purchases, and business services could receive the highest spending on big data analytics. And of course, all of this, the aim of all of this is to better understand customers. Data gives direction on what customers need and want. Netflix, for example, is using data to nurture customer loyalty. The company saves an estimated $1 billion per year in customer retention over its 100 million subscribers. Collecting huge data from users is the key to their retention strategy. If you are a subscriber, you're familiar with how they send you suggestions of the next movie you should watch. This is done using past search and watch data, key insight in what interests the subscriber most, which is the reason why 70% of all films on Netflix are as a basis of Netflix recommending them. For many companies, consumer data offers a better way to understand customer behavior and to improve the customer experience. Data such as reviews and feedback are used to nimbly modify their digital presence, goods or services to better suit the current marketplace. Just think Amazon, retail, cloud computing, advertising, and a continuous development of products to capture different markets. Contextualized data can help companies understand how consumers are engaging with and responding to their marketing to campaigns, and they can adjust that accordingly. This highly predictive use gives businesses an idea of what consumers want and what they have already done. Mapping user journeys and personalizing their journey, segmenting data effectively means companies market to the people more likely to engage. This helps to transform the data into cash flow. For businesses that capture large amounts of data, collecting information and selling it, this represents huge opportunities for new revenue streams. So what does the future hold? Does the data scientists and the data analytics and the machines keep rising? The simple answer is yes. We love generating data in the value exchange with corporations to use their services. And corporations love using our data to help them make decisions. In their 2020 blog, The Future of the Big Data, five predictions from experts in 2025, iTransition had some interesting predictions. <coughs> Excuse me. A few of them. Data volumes will continue to increase and migrate to the cloud. Most big data experts agree that the amount of generated data will grow exponentially in the future. In its Data Age 2025 report, it forecasts that the global data sphere will reach 175 zettabytes by 2025. Machine learning will continue to change the landscape. Experts believe that computers' ability to learn from data will improve considerably due to more advanced unsupervised algorithms, deeper personalization, and cognitive services. As a result, there will be machines that are more intelligent and capable of reading emotions, driving cars, exploring space, treating patient, patients. The investment in this area is huge. Data scientists and analytics and CDOs will be in high demand. The positions with data in them are relatively new, but the need for specialists in the labor market is already high. In 2019, KPMG surveyed 3,600 CIOs and technology executives from 108 con countries and found that 67% of them are struggling with skill shortages. So, being frightening and fascinating at the same time, the future of big data analytics promises to change the way businesses operate in finance, healthcare, manufacturing, and other industries. The overwhelming size of big data may create additional challenges in the future, 
including data privacy, security risks, shortage of data professionals, and difficulties in data storage and processing. As we've seen over the last few weeks with the exam results, the Ofsted algorithm enforced statistical likely variance, even if it didn't exist. If a school had never had a U grade in the last three years, for example, the algorithm enforced a statistical likelihood that it would happen. So the lowest scoring student would be given a U, even if they weren't a U standard. So a great example of machine statistical robustness without cognitive understanding of the impact of data being used and how it's been worked. However, most agree big data will mean big value. It will give rise to new job categories and entire departments responsible for data management in large organizations. So there seems no end to the rise of the data analyst in every facet of our lives, where our privacy choices, protection of our information, news and social influence are controlled by third parties. Is it a welcome development or will data analytics and their machines become our controllers? Paul. Thank you very much, Lee. And as a part of the Just IT poker group, I can vouch for the number of messages that come through that. Really interesting insight, and I'm sure you've got some questions as the audience and the panel will have some opinions on that in a second. Um, we're going to just go to our second poll, if that's OK. So I'm going to hand over to James, who's going to talk to you and give you a question around the more technical aspect of data. So uh, over to you, James. Thank you very much, Paul. Uh, that was some fantastic data, Um So poll number two, ladies and gentlemen, is which language best supports your analysts of your uh, analysts of your data? So I'm going to launch that poll now, and there are going to be a few options for you to um, select from. So you will see um, some of the ones that we've got up there um, is Python, SQL, R, Julia, and Scala. Please select which one best supports um, your data sets within your company. Uh, we've had oh, quite a few more votes flying in at the moment. So I'll give that another five more seconds, guys. So five, four, three, two, and one. And I'm gonna be closing the poll now. And I'm gonna share that with some interesting results there, Paul. Over to you to share the percentages. Thank you very much. You can see that Python there with 14%, uh, SQL leading the way, 79 and 7 for R, Julia and Scala not to score. That's kind of in line with what we would expect. And I'm sure the panel will have some opinions around that. So it is time for our uh, panel discussion. So I'd like to ask all of our panelists to uh, come onto the screen if possible and unmute themselves. Fantastic. Thank you very much. We have all four. Brilliant. So welcome to the, the webinar, our panel. Um, if it's all right, I'll introduce you briefly uh, and then I'll come back to you individually for a, a short bio of yourself and, and to really understand kind of why you're here, why you want to why you want to come on this webinar and why you want to talk about data analysts to our, to our audience. So um, firstly, we have Joanna Martin and Sianna Sivarajan from an employer aspect. Uh, so Joe works for Hampshire County Council. Uh, Siana works as a, a future talent lead in the financial sector. Uh, we also have a learner aspect. So we've got Joshua Bossenpum. Hopefully I've got that right, Josh, uh, who recently completed, yeah, <laughs> recently completed his data analyst apprenticeship in the, uh, the media sector. Uh, and finally, from a, a training and quality aspect, we have Oliver Roberts, who is a data analyst trainer and business coach for our uh, apprenticeship here at Just IT. Um, if it's all right, I'm going to go to Joe first. So welcome, Joe. Um, can you Hi. tell us a bit about what you do and, and why you're here with us today? Okay, so I've um, said I work for Hampshire County Council, but I work for the Shared Services Partnership um, of Hampshire County Council. Um, and I am the Training and Culture Manager for the department. So um, I lead through best practice with people doing L&D. Um, it's all about engagement, communications, basically look after recruitment in terms of the life cycle of our employees so that they have a good experience with us from right from the onset. Fantastic. Um, I am here, other than being asked kindly to come <laughs> along. Of course. <laughs> um, I think the, but it's actually, it's just, it's a nice opportunity to kind of just give, give our story over in terms of what we've learned with the, with the DA program. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Thanks for having you on board. Look forward to hearing your opinions in a second. Uh, Siana? 
welcome. I'd like to give a bit of an introduction to yourself. Sure. Hi, everyone. I'm Sianna. Um, I'm the apprenticeship lead in um, a company in the financial sector, looking after the onboarding, the development and the progress of um, apprentices um, in the company. Um, so we as an organisation have a great working relationship with Just IT. Um, and I wasn't paid to say that. It is true. Um, and we work with them on a number of apprenticeships, um, one of them including the data analyst apprenticeship. So it is a great opportunity to not only share our organisation's story, but also learn about the impact data analytics has data analytics has um, on others as well and how they're developing data skills to add value. Fantastic. Thanks very much, Yana. I'll give you that £10 later on. You're a star. Um, next up, we're going to go to the, the kind of learner aspects. So I'd like to introduce Joshua. So Joshua, would like to give a little bit about yourself. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Joshua. Um, I'm an apprentice who actually went through the level four data analysis, analysis apprenticeship um, and I got placed at Warner Music Group. Um, yeah, I was tasked with um, reconciling sales, um, performing analysis, ad hoc analysis on sales as well, and then providing my feedback to stakeholders, which would be like directors, um, what's it called, my senior management, and normally another team within the company as well. Yeah, brilliant. And what did you get in your uh, final grade? I got a distinction. You got a distinction, fantastic. Yeah. So the help of my yeah. business coach and <laughs> the company, yes. Yeah, so. You're in the second, mate. Um, and last but not least, I'm uh, going to go over to, to Oliver or, or Ollie. Hi, Ollie. How are you, mate? Welcome. And uh, just a bit of introduction to, to yourself. Thank you, Paul. Um, so I'm uh, a business coach. Um, I'm going to preempt the question a little bit here, but the reason I'm here today is because I'm a massive nerd when it comes to data science. I think it's really exciting, uh, both from like a technical angle, like learning the skills you need for it, but also the way it changes, not just the way you think, by the way you approach all problems um, because ultimately it's a mental toolkit it gives you um, and for me that's the most interesting aspect of what it's done to the way I think um, yep I've uh, I'm a business coach I've got some wonderful apprentices um, I can't take credit for Josh's distinction he's not one of mine um, <laughs> but it's uh, it's a pleasure to work at Just IT and I really enjoy the um, kind of the connection I make with my apprentices um, and kind of guiding through them through their learner journey Fantastic. Brilliant. Well, great to have you all on board. I'm going to come off in a second. I'm now going to hand over to our client services director, Richard Lambden, who's going to run the discussion for the next 20 minutes or so. So, Richard, over to you. Thank you very much, Paul, and good afternoon, everybody, and uh, welcome, panel. Um, Joe, uh, just to kind of give you the heads up, I'll, I'll come to you first with the first question, if I, if I may. Um, yes. Can you kind of give us an insight into the sort of strategies that um, Hampshire are using to kind of build a data-driven organization? Yeah, so um, insight and data, obviously, with an organization being local government organization, it's a, it's a really powerful thing for us. Um, and one of our strategic priorities is insight drives everything. So every decision that we make um, is underpinned by data. You know, we're driving our manager performance with data, um, where we, we have an attitude that's not okay to not know your team's performance, your productivity, your workload, your error rate. So, I mean, kind of that's where we are in a performance perspective with it. But I think also for us, the more powerful way in which we're using it is how we communicate differently with people now. Um, we communicate across our customers and our partner bases, but using data visualization um, allows us to tailor that information a bit more. And, you know, we can tell a different story and you can tailor it to each audience. Um, we also use Power BI um, where we expect our managers to just move on at touch of a button and make their own business and um, performance based decisions at that point in time. So it is a really, really fundamental um, priority for us at this point in time. Fantastic. And, and have you, can you think of perhaps an example of, of some positive change that's been affected within the council as a result of some of the, the reports that, that you and your colleagues have produced? Yeah, so, um, well, it has been on a journey itself. So when we look back, so the partnership was actually formed back in 2014 and the quality of the data that we're now looking at and what we understand about our customers, um, as well as our employees, you know, it's hugely important. Um, the, the local government, we've obviously got financial challenges. So um, as I've said, you know, the 
the efficiencies that we have to make, we cannot do without understanding where, you know, where our contact is. Is it, you know, we need to improve our help, our guidance, all of those types of things. And this, this is what really lends itself to it. Excellent. Thank you very much indeed. Siano, if I can come to, to yourself um, next, um, can, can I ask how um, you're kind of identifying the skills gap across your business? Obviously, you work in a, in a different sector in the financial services sector, uh, and, and therefore generating the interest perhaps to easily internally upskill existing members of staff or bring, bring new hires into the data area. Yeah, sure. Um, so one of the key uh, strategic projects that we're working on as an organisation requires um, our staff to upskill in data skills. So we have consulted with uh, various business areas across the organisation um, and carried out a skills gap analysis with a particular focus on data skills. So this has enabled us to identify uh, both the level of skills that we currently have, but also the ones that we need to build on for the future. So this type of consultation has uh, really enabled us to build a data learning pathway, um, which is uh, underpinned by the training provided by the apprenticeships to help um, identify and also upskill uh, staff. Um, alongside this, um, in terms of generating interest, we have created an internal attraction campaign, which um, includes an annual apprenticeship fair, um, ongoing campaigns on internal communication platforms, um, and also sharing um, success stories as case studies so that others can, you know, hear about all the great um, things that they've done on the apprenticeship and, you know, whether that be a promotion or another new role. Um, which has uh, generated a lot of interest, but also with regards to our external campaigns, we regularly run insight days and um, attend school campus events, which have also worked out really well. Have you, do you think you've seen a, an increasing demand in this, this area? Is it something that's becoming more critical for your business? Yes, definitely. Yeah, definitely. I'm not a data expert, but having worked in the data division for two years um, and now working in HR where also uh, data is really booming, I can safely say that data is something that we definitely are using more and more and uh, different types of it. Excellent. If I can come back to you, Joe, so a sort of similar sort of question in terms of uh, the demand. I mean, I know you've, you've got a number of uh, people that are Kind of doing the, the data analytical apprenticeship, for example, at the moment, are you finding that kind of the the word of mouth, almost the benefit, starts to get a, an effect in terms of seeing other people seeing the interest in it and, and wanting to kind of follow suit? I think you might be on mute, Joe. There we are. I thought I'd unmuted. <laughs> I've no got problem. Me, so. <laughs> um, yeah, so for us, it's a very similar thing um, around, you know, we, we do a lot of internal promotion in terms of just L&D in general. Um, but what we what we have learned with the post cohort, because obviously the learners that we've got on programme now, it, this is a very new thing for us to do. Um, you know, we yeah. were always kind of stuck within what we kind of what we knew. And this was the first time that we've ever explored doing a, a BA programme. Um, but what I'm really positive to say is actually that the word of mouth is happening and we're, we're enrolling more um, because we've got other teams that maybe not work directly with the Insight team, but they handle huge amounts of data. Um, and actually having that skill just lends itself really to, to everybody. Excellent. Thank you. Josh, if I can come to, Josh, if I can come to, to you. Um, I, 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 I would just say, Siana, it's no no shame in not being a data expert. I'm not either, so uh, I'll join you in that club. I'm going to hand over to somebody who is, who's clearly Joshua, if you've got a distinction, is uh, the friendship. Well done, well done, sir. Um, can you just take us back, if you will, to when you kind of first joined um, the music sector the, that you're in, and almost give us a day in the life of what it was like to be an apprentice, and think about, I don't know, what did your role entail um, and how your employer supported you, and then perhaps almost compare and contrast to where you are now that you've completed, and obviously you're fully a member of the, the team. So almost two questions in one there. Take us on the journey and then compare and contrast. Yeah, okay, perfect. Um, so when I first started at, at um, Warner Music Group um, in the digital finance team, um, I was 
first tasked with um, processing sales files and financial statements um, and loading them onto the database. Um, and obviously, um, there was no process at the time in place for it to be automated. So it take about three or four days for it to be done. Um, so um, um, following the apprenticeship and obviously following the advice of bias uh, management, they wanted me to automate the whole process. So that entailed me learning Python and then using um, modules such as Pandas and NumPy to then manipulate the, the, um, the sales files coming in and then let it, let, letting it match the database schema. Um, and then from there, um, I was also tasked with um, um, ad hoc analysis. So that would require SQL. Um, so I'd, I'd be tasked with like looking at the, pro the performance of a product over say three or four years and then um, that would require me to use SQL to then go through our unstructured database to then pull yeah. out identifiers for that particular product and then use that as the base of my analysis or as the base of my analysis um, using like um, time series analysis, um, linear regression to then perform, to then create a presentation for stakeholders such as um, a director, manager, and another team within the, within the organization. So presumably yeah. you're looking at kind of what, downloads from uh, Spotify um, and uh, those sorts of things to kind of assess uh, what royalties for artists, is that is that the kind of work you're doing? Yeah, that is correct, yeah. So essentially the way it would work is um, the DSP would send us the sales file, just just the transactional sales file without any identifiers on it in terms of like it's a um, company identifier or it's a service identifier. And obviously I'd have to look at the data um, fill in the gaps using what using our um, intranet and then uh, what's it called loading in the file um, yeah and it, 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 that falls in line with the main objective of the team which was was to ensure that the sales files and these financial statements were reconciled to ensure that the royalties paid to our artists um, was paid on time but this, this might sound a, a, a kind of a naive question so forgive me but yeah. I mean, are you interested in music does it help that the sort of data you're manipulating is stuff that you that you find interesting yeah, yeah, it, it helps massively because obviously um, you can look at the data and you can kind of see your interest in it as well, in a sense. So, like, obviously, I'm I'm quite um I'm quite a big Ed Sheeran fan, to be fair. So when I see Ed Sheeran in sales and sees performance, and, and me, I'm just like, oh, that's quite interesting to see the insight from a different <laughs> perspective. You know what I mean, so and then the fact that I'm working on the data is just, you know what I mean, so very interesting yeah you're right you're only two links away from med sheeran is, is what you're trying to say yeah, there yeah, yeah, so, so the compare and contrast bit obviously really good insight there is to somebody who's come into a business you'd think would be really sophisticated but actually the systems weren't particularly you through yeah. your apprenticeship been given some tools to automate something that saved a massive amount of time now yeah. you've kind of whatever you know two years on what's what's the difference in terms of the sort of role that you're doing and how your role is enhanced um, so essentially, at the start of at the start of my role, it was very um, very manual. Um, you had to talk to a lot of people to try and figure out the information and figure out where to collect the information. Um, and in essence, what I decided to do, I th and what, which I thought was best, was to um, essentially make a repertoire and then automate repertoire of where the source of information was coming from, and then automate the extraction of the information. Um, which is obviously a massive difference to literally taking three yeah. or four days to process each DSP to literally like whittling, whittling, whittling it down to what say two or three hours or so. So yeah, yeah. a massive difference. Um, in addition to that, um, uh, before my apprenticeship, I wasn't very uh, what's it called pro program savvy. Right. I guess you could yeah. call it. Yeah, that's the thing. I was I was very um, proficient in Excel, but not SQL or Python or anything. Um, throughout the course of the apprenticeship, I've become very proficient in both. And um, yeah, she's helped me a lot. Um, envision my goals as as a my goals as a, within the career of a data analyst. Yeah. Superb. Thank you very much. We'll come back to you in a moment, Oliver. If I could kind of come to you and think in a in a broader context as somebody who's uh, obviously got a quite a lot of uh, learners on 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 program. Um, what would you know? Can you give me an insight into sort of I don't know the skills that you think um, somebody would would need to have, but regardless of whether they're an apprentice or not, actually if they're entering this particular sector and they're looking to um, you know manipulate data and get outcomes from it. What what sort of skills do they have? I mean, the obvious one that comes to mind is they need to be um, quite good with numbers and quite mathematical and have a bit of a statistical bias. But, but what other factors do you think would be important on that? Thank you, Richard. So. I'm going to say there's kind of I'd say there's four key factors. You already mentioned the first one, like um, you know, just like a solid grasp of numeracy skills. Um, so I only touch on that. You know, obviously we 
cover the basics and we explore um, it again when we come to statistics but the sort of the three other important skills which I don't think are numerically linked are um, you've got to have a passion for learning frankly if you're going into programming or data analysis of any sort because you'll always be getting new skills new software new modules you've got to add on so um, within this course we do R Python SQL visualization data analysis no one comes on the course knowing all these things everyone comes on having to move outside their comfort zone and cover you know maybe even entire kind of topics or genres they've never gone into before what's important is you approach it with the right attitude and you know you accept you're not going to be good when you start but through work you can become so um i'd say probably the second big one is an analytical mindset this is kind of particularly important in both programming but also in the way you approach a problem which is ultimately the way you think of analyzing data um, by having an analytical mindset you can envision what you want your end target how you get there the steps in between you can create a rigorous set of rules um, for how you would go about analyzing a data or breaking down a problem um, and you can understand what either mental tool or software tool you need for each step now yeah. I'm not saying you have to have this fully developed when you start but it's something you will build during the apprenticeship and the third one I'd say is um, sort of touching what Josh said before whenever you're analyzing something domain knowledge understanding of the area is really important so um, you know if you're looking at data around music understanding what might be driving the, the trends helps you interpret your results so again solid numeracy skills passion for learning an analytical mindset and a, a desire to really understand your data and explore a problem superb thank you coming coming back to you josh then does, does that kind of does that resonate with with your own kind of journey in terms of where you're at you kind of said i think that you were pretty proficient at excel but you hadn't necessarily used python sql r is that right um, yes, that is correct. Yeah, I feel like the uh, apprenticeship very um, it kind of molded, like Oliver just said, um, molded all the aspects of a data analyst and solidified the knowledge in them. Because obviously, I only had knowledge in essentially Excel and maybe reconciling certain um, like certain files and stuff. But I didn't have any knowledge of like statistical models or how to perform linear regression through Python or anything like that. So yeah, yeah, good. Jo Joanna, jo you know the the the, the second poll. Um, appears to be SQL, obviously, uh, in terms of uh, databases, really strong. Python was second, R was was third. It, is that common? Do you think is that is that were you surprised by those results, or was that pretty much yeah, replicate no, what you're no. seeing? At? Yeah, yeah, I wasn't surprised by the results at all. Um, you know, we 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 collect a lot of data. Um, you know, and and it's web analytics. It's it's contact through our our customer and. Um, our CRM system, basically. So we are constantly collecting data. So I wasn't, I wasn't shocked by those results. Okay. And you know, what, what sort of, again, without breaking any confidences, what sort of data are you using as a, as a business? So at, as a business, so we've got our, we use SAP um, survey. We use, obviously, we've got the Power BI. We've got the contact-driven data, as I said, through our CRM system. We've got, um, our, we use our platforms at SAP. So we obviously, we extract a lot of data out that in terms of what, you know, what's happening with our users. We've also got like performance packs for our partners. So again, that's what's happening in the system. And it's whether it's, whether it's, it's our side or whether it's the user's side as well. So we're exploring both elements of it. Um, and we also have partner relationships managers. And whilst this isn't your black and white data, but actually, them understanding their partners and hearing, you know, the noise on the ground, as we so to speak, the kind of the baton comments is really, really kind of what builds our story. Okay, thank you. Um, Siana, you, you've kind of heard the particular journey that, that, that Josh um, went on. How does that kind of, you know, compare and contrast with, with the financial services sector and the sort of experience that the, the, the learners that you have in your organisation that, uh, that are on program? Yeah, I mean, um, we always try to put, um, we always endeavor to put learners on an apprenticeship that is uh, suitable for a role so that they have significant exposure to the standard. Um, but that can that doesn't have to necessarily be in the data division. Um, it can be in various um, other divisions where they're exposed to 
any sort of data set um, using different types of um, languages. So we tend to use um, R, Python um, in terms of analyzing it and also um, Tableau quite heavily to present that data. So as long as they have access to that system and they have um, sufficient data, which we've got loads of, then um, yeah, they're able to they're able to do the apprenticeship. And that's a really good point. I would imagine, you know, regardless of whether they're doing an apprenticeship or not, um, it's it's one of those things where pretty much every every department these days generates data, doesn't it? Uh, you know, certain certain roles obviously seem to to be pigeonholed, but I would imagine data is key. You know, whether you're in HR, marketing, finance, um, you know, administration, you know, logistics, whatever it might be, I would imagine data is the and the use of the data is pretty important. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, good. Oliver, what sort of um, you know trends do you think there has been in the sector? We heard from from Lee Dempster in terms of a you know a pretty broad brush overview, which was really really interesting. But what sort of things perhaps have, have come to the fore in the last six six months to a year that you think has become more more important? So, kind of. Frankly, a lot. Okay, but I'll try and summarise what I think. I kind of um, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> as we've really touched on it. You know, it's one of the most exciting times to be in the field. Um, so, I mean, I suppose first off the bat, um, obviously, with workforce is being more broken up due to COVID. There's a greater emphasis on automated systems. So, while historically we might have relied on mail more and kind of talking to each other to get things moving, actually, we've realised we've got the technology, the ability. Why don't we automate a lot of this? Um, I'll probably say a second aspect is, is sped up the uptake of these new systems because we've got this downtime, we've already got this disruption. Why not make, um, why not turn this negative into a positive and use this potentially uh, kind of, you might have lost some responsibilities for your department depending on what your organization or what your role is. So make the use of that to upskill. Um, I would say there's, if you've been following any of the COVID information, um, the, kind of the explosion in visualization all the different websites and kind of ways of tracking information and numbers I've found really interesting, you know, all the different dashboards. Um, and also the what about, so, what about social media, Oliver? I would imagine, you know, there's lots of, I guess, unstructured data. Have I got that right in terms of, you know, lots of words and, and commentary and all sorts of stuff that people need to, to kind of in, interpret? 100%. And, you know, um, unstructured data is anything that isn't formally you kind of like in a database so they say like all this information which is so rich you know which is on facebook which is on social media um which has so much meaning within it you know um, gauging public sentiment trying to use facebook to track um kind of mentions of covid or spreading you know there's so much information there we, there really is a glut of information and just not um, enough people with the skill sets to analyze it um and i'll probably say that kind of the fifth aspect is um, there's been a shift. We've always kept data online, but um, if you guys have heard of um, Amazon's AWS service, um, yeah. it's currently one of the most profitable arms. It's I think it's pulled in 2.6 billion, according to the Bank of America profit uh, this year. Um, and it's the idea that not only do you keep your data in the cloud, you're also moving your processing power into the cloud. So it's very much yeah. a reshaping of the, kind of even the very fundamental structure of how an organization handles its data. Excellent. So really good introduction there, panel. Thank you so much for your time. Um, there's going to be a, another Q&A session at the, at the end when we get the opportunity just to um, answer some of the questions that the audience put to us. But for now, uh, Joanna, Siana, Joshua and Oliver, thank you very much. Uh, really insightful. And I'll hand back to you for a second, Paul. Thank you very much, Richard. If I could ask uh, Joe, uh, Nira and Siana to come off screen and mute themselves for a second. Ollie, I'm gonna keep you on. And um, that was really, really interesting. Thank you so much for your opinions and your thoughts on that. <laughs> You're all right there, Joe. You'll come off in a second. <laughs> you, you, know, you can stay on with us if you want, but Oliver, we'll just go have a quick chat around the uh, the data analyst apprenticeship in, in general. Um, and a bit of an overview of, of that. Um, we're obviously very proud to be a training provider. That Joe's jumped off now. Um, we're proud to be a training provider who, uh, at this time especially, are able to offer existing members of staff uh, in workplaces or, or new fresh talent looking for their first role that the opportunity to go on this programme. Um, the Level 4 programme typically takes around about 20 months and it consists of 34 days worth of training 
Um, and this covers a number of different elements, which, which Ollie will, will cover in a moment. Um, the apprenticeship allows the knowledge given by providers to then be put into context in a working environment uh, for a learner to be able to build a, a portfolio of work that showcase those skills. And there's also an employer reference that would be completed uh, and that allows the employer to talk about how the learner has shown the professional skills, attitudes and behaviours that are expected of them uh, in the workplace and in their role. The programme then ends with uh, an endpoint assessment, which Ollie will come on to in a second. Um, the programme can be paid through, uh, paid for through your levy pot, uh, but if you are a non-levy employer on this webinar, there are funding methods available and we can talk to you about that uh, after this webinar. Um, we're going to go on to the next slide, if that's all right, James. I'm going to bring in Ollie now. So I talked about the 34 days worth of knowledge and you can see here we've got a bit of a learner journey that breaks it down month by month and milestone by milestone. So Ollie's just going to give a, a brief overview of the, of the knowledge we teach within Just IT and, and through the apprenticeship. So over to you, Ollie. Thank you, Paul. Um, so what we're seeing here is the first of two slides showing the different milestones um, in the apprenticeship. Um, they are rather hard to group, but what I want you guys to take away from this is the grouping of skills. Um, so the way we build up the apprenticeship is to give the apprentice the tools they need to practically start using their skills in the work shape, both to benefit you as an employer, but also to build their portfolio, which is their big body of evidence, as quickly as possible. So um, our first milestone is the onboarding. The second milestone, um, as you guys are from the poll quite familiar with, SQL. Um, we do an introduction to statistics with R and we explore data visualization, so generating of graphs, images, dashboards using uh, Tableau and Power BI. So these are sort of like the bread and butter skills you need a milestone to to kind of begin your um, an apprentice's kind of data analysis journey. Milestone three is more advanced statistical methods, but um, largely using R, which is a statistical programming language, which is really good at it. Milestone four, we move on to um, kind of data architecture and governance. Uh, we start to explore Python, which is a highly flexible language that can also perform statistical analysis, but can also do a wide range of other abilities. So you can start to build your own framework, really useful. Um, we look at more forms of advanced analysis, particularly um, forms of advanced modeling. Milestone five, which this stage we're about months 11 to 13. Um, we start to look at big data. So what Richard mentioned earlier, um, he started. He was talking about unstructured data, which um, sort of weighs how to parse and extract meaning from all that information that is traditionally been quite hard to kind of categorize in brackets and to get inf get the desired information from. Um, we do more analytics um, and we explore the business value. Um, one thing I haven't mentioned, which I should have done, is as you can see at the bottom, it says the portfolio completion amount. So we see. In milestone two, it's 10%. Milestone three, it's 30. This is the um, during their practical period, which is the first 18 months. The learner is creating uh, their portfolio, which is their kind of big body of evidence, their big piece of coursework for the apprenticeship. Um, and as you can see, you know, we expect them to start off slowly because they're largely building up their skill sets. But as we move through the milestones and they gain more access to all the skills they need to complete it, we expect them to start catching up. So by milestone five, they're on 70%. Milestone six, this is the kind of um, theory module, if you will. So this is when they set the KM1 and KM2, which are knowledge module one, knowledge module two, which um, are their exams. They're going to then come out to milestone seven, which uh, will be at the 18 month, 17, end of 18, or sorry, end of month 17. This is their endpoint assessment. So by this stage, the apprentice has passed their KM1 and KM2 exams. They've completed their portfolio, which is their big body of evidence, and they're moving into their endpoint assessment which I'm just going to briefly touch on. Um, the endpoint assessment is made up of three components. It's called what is uh, as you can see in milestone eight the synoptic project which is they get a choice between two mini projects. Um, these mini projects will you know definitely make use of SQL and R and Python or either R or Python um, and it's like a mini version of their assumption portfolio so it'll be like a mini project so please you know perform analysis on a uh, particular data set and kind of solve a problem. So that's their synoptic project, which you can think was a mini project. The second component of their endpoint assessment is their uh, final interview and grading, which we can see in milestone nine. So this is in essence a sit down with an examiner who goes through their uh, portfolio, which was their big piece of evidence and ensures the learner kind of um, has a thorough understanding and kind of what their thoughts are. It's really a chance for the apprentice to show off their knowledge and skills. 
Um, and the third aspect of the uh, EPA, which isn't here, is something called the employer reference, which um, you guys as line managers, um, you have direct input. You know, it's um, an analysis of the soft skills of the apprentice, so the things that are harder to quantify in a written piece of work. And obviously, at the end of milestone nine, uh, the apprentice will uh, kind of uh, finish with their BCS assessment, um, and we'll kind of be on hand to help support them in their next steps. Thank you very much, Ollie. Pretty appreciate that. If you could come off camera, we'll call you back on for the Q and A's at the end. Thank you so much for that. If we go on to the next slide. Thanks, James. So just a quick kind of overview, really, of where we've delivered. We, we've said we've worked with uh, around about 150 apprentices over the last two and a half years, and you can see the names on there, the number of different kind of sectors that we work with, whether that be the NHS or councils such as Hackney or, or Hampshire, where, where Joe works, or Warner, sorry, where, where Josh got his distinction. Um, so that's kind of where we've delivered. We're going to go on to the next slide, and that is the last poll of the afternoon. So I'm going to ha uh, hand back over, sorry, to, to James to deliver that. James. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Paul. And uh, so poll three, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, would you consider using uh, the apprenticeship levy to either hire or develop your data analyst skills within your organisation? So I'm going to launch the poll now. Um, three options is yes, no, and unsure. You know, might not. You might need some more information about that because that might not be your your department. So we're just seeing the votes coming in now, thick and fast. Five, four. Three, two, and one. And I'm going to close and share that. Um, Paul, we've got 55% that says yes. Um, it's really reassure, reassuring um, that no one has voted no, um, but half of the audience would need more information. Now, obviously, we are in the best possible uh, position. Um, we've got a team of consultants that will talk you through how to utilize that friendship levy, which is going to be definitely the catalyst to get us back onto the road to recovery um, after COVID. Thank you very much, James. Yeah, fantastic to see that 55% of you would consider it. And, and absolutely, if you are unsure and you need more information, there'll be some contact details coming up shortly uh, to speak to us. Just a quick uh, bit around the other apprenticeships we offer here at Just IT. Uh, you can see we offer level four in IS business analyst and software development. Uh, we have recently done webinars around those topics as well. If you haven't seen them or you would like more information, please do go onto our YouTube channel to find out more around those pieces. Uh, we also do a digital marketing program at level three, so really great opportunities there. Um, infrastructure technician is our bread and butter. We've been doing that since we became an apprenticeship provider back in 2011. So if that's something that you are looking to talk about within your organization, then please do be in contact with us. Um, and we then see a, 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 the next step really for infrastructure learners. They carry on to a network engineer program at level four. These are all uh, via the British Computer Society, via uh, Bar Digital Marketing, sorry, which is City and Guilds is the, the governing body around that. Uh, and the last part, the other programs, so leadership and management, we cover at project management at level four and also for uh, team leaders and operational managers at level five. So if you would like any more details around those, please do let us know. Thank you, James. Just the other solutions that we can provide. Yes, we've talked about apprenticeships here today, very uh, apprenticeships focused. But we, we have more, more strings to the bow at Just IT. So we are a training organization. So we do provide short courses in data analysts or business analysts, and we can deliver those in house and on site. Uh, apprenticeships we've talked about, so our level four data analyst pro program, and we do provide candidate assessment centers. I know that Josh uh, came from one of those assessment centers to get his opportunity. But if you're looking for more senior hires, then we do have a recruitment arm of the business as well. So we're able to do uh, senior roles in the data analyst sector. And we also provide hosted interviews uh, for those sorts of roles. If you'd like more information, then please do ask. On to the next slide, please, James. So I'm conscious of time, but it'd be great just to get everyone back on quickly. And Richard, just to see if there's any more kind of questions that have popped up uh, before I round off the call. So if everyone can come back on screen, if you can mute yourself until you've been asked a question, that'd be great. I'm just going to hand back over to Richard briefly. Thank you very much. Um, so I'll ask the, uh, the same question to, to each of you, and uh, I'll, I'll kind of go left to right as I'm looking at my screen. So Josh first, then Oliver, then Tiana, then, then Joanna, if that's, that's OK. Um, so the last poll there was 55% would use uh, an apprentice and 45% weren't, sh weren't sure. So I'm, I'm going to ask you to, to kind of do a pitch to the unsures 
and just say from each of your individual perspectives why you think um, introducing an apprenticeship program in the data space might be a good thing for the audience. So, to Josh, from your perspective, why would you encourage people to do it? I think you're on mute, sir. James, could you just unmute everybody for me, please? Josh, are you with us? Hello. Anybody else able to speak? Oliver, are you are you unmuted? We, I think Joe's unmuted there, Richard. Um, we've got... Okay, Joe, let's go to you then. Whilst no. we, we saw other te te technology on the other other people, so apologies for that. So, Joe, from from a from an employer's perspective, why, why should they embrace a program? Okay, so I would just like to say I'm delighted that somebody else is having problems because I thought it was just me. <laughs> <laughs> Stuck on screen, unable to get off. Um, so from really our perspective, obviously, um, our people are really, really important and employee engagement is our, our number one priority. Um, and, you know, some of our roles are one level. OK, so it is really quite difficult for them to to get opportunity with variety and things like that. But this is what this is about. This is allowing them to develop and grow and work with different people across different teams. And, you know, in some areas where they might not always have the, the requirements of the role to fulfill, we will find that by trying to explore other teams that they can go and learn and join. So, yeah. Um, a huge benefit on your people agenda. So, so it's it's as, as much about um, retaining staff and career development um, as necessarily new hires in, in your case. Is that is that fair? Absolutely. I mean, Hampshire County Council is a huge organisation, and one of our challenges is, you know, it, it costs to hire people. Um, we want to keep them. We're not necessarily saying we don't want to keep them in the service centre. What we want to do is keep them within the organisation, and if we manage that, yeah. then we. Is what we need to. Superb, lovely, thank you. Sianna, if, if uh, I, I think I'm right in saying you've utilised both new hires and upskilling with existing members of, of staff, um, so you know you've got a broad brush approach there. What what kind of advice, if you were talking to somebody who was uh, not tried an apprenticeship scheme before, as, as somebody who leads in your financial services sector organisation, what advice would you provide? I mean, as an employer, I'd say it's a good investment or great investment. Um, the study time investment will pay off in the long run. Um, and it's a good retention tool, just as um, Joanna has mentioned. Um, you know, apprentices gain behaviour skills as well as technical understanding. So um, from a learner perspective, even though um, I haven't done the GA apprenticeship myself, I did join the organisation on an apprenticeship. So um, on a personal level, I can, you know, relate on seeing the benefits of getting good, great training and on the job learning. Um, and I've seen the benefits of um, how apprentices have progressed after doing an apprenticeship, um, which includes the, the DA apprenticeship itself. So um, the good data analysts are extremely valuable for their ability of being able to analyse and get more insight into the business and make great decisions based on evidence. So definitely an in, invaluable opportunity to, to make use of. Thank you. And thanks for, thanks for raising the, uh, what the standard talks about, the attitude, skills and behaviours I like to think of as the professional behaviours. Actually, you're absolutely right. I think there's, there's as much about growth in, in uh, those sort of areas as there is in the technical skills, isn't there? Oliver, you, you've obviously seen people from you know day one, and, and and then you see them come out the other side two years later. So, what what kind of progress do you see, and what what value do you think people are doing? I think that the way they take ownership of their role with the new tools they have is it's not just the tools, but the mindset is really the most valuable thing. It's you know you can have someone who very much has starts with a, a data entry role or sort of you know minimal analysis, and by being on this apprenticeship, by being on this course, it invites them to build that ever greater domain knowledge, that greater understanding, which, you know, from a business perspective, um, is almost invaluable. You know, you can hire an external business an business analyst, but by training up an apprentice from your own team, they'll have an understanding of how you operate and your data in a way an external person never can. 
um, or it will always be incomplete. Um, so I suppose yeah. from an organization, that's one of the really important angles. Um, and I'll probably say the, another big draw is you don't know what you don't know. So while there are clear benefits to data analysis, there's going to the, the values are only going to increase. And as an organization, if you're sitting on the fence, I would say there's probably efficiencies you're not even aware of. You'd only become aware of once you had an apprentice. Yeah, so that return on investment is, is definitely something that can be uh, can be achieved. So I'm going to give the final word to, to Joshua because he is the man who did a data analytical apprenticeship. I'm hoping he can talk to me. Joshua, you were there. You are. You, I'm not hearing you. I don't know if anybody else is. We, he, unfortunately, Joshua, he's having, no. Josh there, was Joshua was unmuted. I don't know what the problem is. Are you there, Josh? No, we're not. We're, I tell you, we're going to have to do it by sign language, I think, Josh, because for whatever reason, the uh, the technology technologies. <laughs> there, there we go. So, uh, as a man who got a distinction um, and has already demonstrated, I thought very eloquently earlier about the the benefits of uh, some of the systems he implemented in in Warner. Um, you know, I, I hope he is a good example of uh, you know why you, why you should engage with a particular program. So I'm going to wrap it up there because I'm conscious we're slightly over time, and I'll hand back to you, Paul, just to conclude the webinar. Thank you very much. Yeah, sorry. Sorry on that one, uh, Josh. Well, hopefully, if you want to have any further conversations, I'm happy to, to hook you up with Josh. He can give his insight. If I could ask the panelists to come off screen and mute themselves, thank you so much for your, your time and your input today. Greatly appreciated. Um, the last couple of slides here, I know we're overrun slightly, so hold with us for one second. If you would like any further information, the conversation does continue after this. So there is our contact details. If you do have an account manager within Just IT, please do reach out, or if you would like further information, you can see our email and our phone numbers on that. In a second, we're just going to run a short survey at the end of this, so please hold on for that part. But we are going to be doing another one of these next month in the same kind of Thursday slot at 12.30. So it's Thursday the 24th of September, and, and that is around what makes an awesome employer. So it's very much around uh, how to hire uh, and retain talent in the, the new digital world that we live in. Um, so on to the last slide, if that's all right, James. So you can see we've got our own machine that will uh, be loading a survey at the end for you. I just want to say thank you for your participation. Thank you to our uh, panelists and for everyone for their um, yeah to be watching and, and uh, paying attention. We'd love to hear your feedback. So there'll be six uh, short questions at the end to answer, and any feedback that we can get is, is greatly helpful. Um, on behalf of myself and Just IT, thank you very much for your time and have a lovely afternoon. Take care.